For the last two years, I lived in Stockholm, Sweden. Because of this, I was able to explore new cultures, discover different customs, and obtain a more expanded and complete view on the world as a whole. Now that I'm back in America, I realize that living in and traveling around Europe has been an unbelievable experience, and one that I'll never forget. My travels to Sweden also happened to coincide with the time I became a hardcore coaster enthusiast. And so, as you might have guessed, during those two years I made an effort to get out and ride a bunch of different coasters all across the continent, and I did that fairly successfully. I was able to ride over 170 roller coasters in Europe, located at 26 theme parks as well as Kolmården, which will not be ranked because it's a zoo. I already did a video ranking my top 25 roller coasters, but today I'll be ranking all those theme parks. Even more so than roller coasters, ranking theme parks is extremely difficult. While making this list, I had to balance my personal experience at the park with how good it objectively is. And as you'll see in a few minutes, I have quite a few unpopular opinions. Before we get started, here are a few quick disclaimers. First off, I was not able to visit every single theme park in Europe, although I did my best to get to all of the good ones. As a result, this ranking will be filled with just that, good theme parks. I enjoyed my time at all of these parks, and so those that place towards the bottom aren't inherently bad, they're just the least good of those I chose to go to. I visited theme parks in Sweden, Finland, Spain, Denmark, Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium, the UK, Poland, and France. Here's a list of all the parks I went to. And so, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Here's every theme park I visited in Europe, ranked. Unfortunately, there's got to be a last place finisher, and it'll end up being Legendia in Poland. I want to stress this again, this is by no means a bad park. It clearly hasn't seen too much investment, but I quite enjoyed my time here. It's got a pretty nice atmosphere, good landscaping, and feels like a place that's not necessarily going to wow you with what it has to offer, but allows you to find something special in your own way. Lech Coaster's the obvious standout, and admittedly the only reason I came here, but aside from that, there's not too much else in terms of rides. Dream Hunter Society and Diabelska Petla, the other coasters here, are fun, janky pieces of crap, but Legendia actually boasts a decent collection of non-coaster attractions. The Rapids and Shooting Dark Ride are fun experiences, and the various flats scattered throughout the park are something to do. By the way, I got a flip on the bicycle thingy, and that was a contender for the most proud I've ever been of myself. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble on and on and pretend this park is some underrated masterpiece, but if you're looking for 4 hours of fun and a damn good coaster while you're in the area, definitely consider giving Legendia a visit. Next is a park that has the same sort of visit it for that one coaster vibe as Legendia, and here the park isn't afraid to admit it. Holiday Park is most well known for Expedition G-Force, and its incredibly slow moving line was where I spent most of my time there. This park is a bit of a step up from Legendia with a more defined supporting cast and some good theming elements. Holiday Park was recently bought by the Plopsa Group, which has resulted in a lot of the Studio 100 characters shown at Plopsa Land being here as well. Admittedly, there's a stark difference from the horrifying theme of Skyscream and the neighboring Vicky Splash, but it is what it is, I guess. I only had about three and a half hours here and visited on a busy Saturday in June, so I wasn't able to experience the park at its full potential, but quite frankly I'm not sure it has too much else to offer. Expedition G-Force is unbelievable, Skyscream is actually insane, like look at these forces, and the rest is good. It's a step up from Legendia, but as a park it doesn't do anything inherently special and comes in 25th. This next park is a tough one to rank due to the fact that my experience there was probably vastly different from the experience most people had. I visited Wallaby Belgium on October 30th, 2022, one of the busiest days in the park's history, and as a result, had to endure some enormous crowds. I don't have any footage from this insane day, but it took an hour and a half just to be able to park, another hour to get into the park, and each ride had at least a two hour wait, with Conda's queue getting up to 210 minutes at its peak. Thank god for single rider lines. As you can imagine, my visit wasn't exactly pleasant, but this ranking doesn't only reflect the crowds, I've been to several parks when they were slammed and had a great time, it reflects the park's poor management of the crowds. Ride operations were well below average, food operations were atrocious, and many pathways were closed, which resulted in thousands of people being crammed into small spaces just to be able to walk. It might be unfair to put this park so low, but I can only rank things based on my personal experiences, so this is where it ends up. Looking at it objectively, Wallaby Belgium seems like a good enough park. 
It's headlined by a worthy standout and has a good supporting cast of coasters. The theming's alright, and I think it would have placed quite a bit higher if I'd visited on a quieter day. I really wish I could have, but as it stood for me, the crowds exposed the weaknesses Wallaby Belgium has, and it'll end up ranking much, much lower than I would have hoped. Thorpe Park comes in 23rd. This park doesn't have a lot going against it, but it doesn't have a ton going for it, either. The ride lineup is very solid, headlined by Stealth, my personal favorite coaster in the UK, and it'll soon receive a huge addition in Project Exodus, which is sure to be the new best coaster in the UK. In terms of other rides, Thorpe has Swarm, which I found to be pretty shitty and the only B&M I didn't enjoy, as well as Saw, which is decently forceful, but it's another shaky shaky. Nemesis Inferno, a solid invert, walking to the ride, and the legendary Flying Fish round out this park's lineup alongside Colossus, which was closed during my visit for its retract. Well done, Merlin! Something that I found was that a lot of the rides here have good theming, but the park as a whole doesn't. I've heard a lot of people trash Thorpe, but I found it to be pretty good for what it is. It's nothing special, but it's an amusement park, and one that I had a really good time at. Not much more to say. Up next is the only park in Finland I visited, Linnanmaki. This is a charming little park located on a hill just outside Helsinki. Everyone knows about this place because of Taiga, which deserves all the praise it's given and more, but there's a lot more to enjoy here outside of just that one ride. Uko and Vor Serata are fun supporting coasters, and like I mentioned earlier, Lin and Maki has an ever-present charm that puts you in a good mood whenever you're walking around there. The park's actually owned by the non-profit Children's Day Foundation, which is just another reason to love this place. Lin and Maki is very small though, both in terms of land and in their collection of rides, which prevents it from placing any higher. Despite that, this park is still very cute, charming, fun, and home to Taiga, my beloved, which is reason enough for it to place above some of the parks below it. I definitely recommend a visit if you're in the area, but aside from Taiga, there's not much else here that's worth traveling too far for. Located in the middle of Copenhagen, Denmark is Tivoli Gardens, which comes in 21st. This almost feels more like a public park than a theme park. The surroundings are absolutely beautiful, with gorgeous plants, flowers, and shrubs that make this place look absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, the ride lineup isn't the best. Rutschebanen is a great wooden coaster with buzz bars, and Demonen is good, I guess, but outside of that there's not much else I experienced that really wowed me. I say that I experienced because there were a few rides that I didn't really know about. I regret not doing much background research because I feel like I didn't give this place that fair of a chance, but when I visited, I simply wasn't aware of Tic Tac or some of their dark rides. However, I don't think those two or three attractions I missed would have influenced my opinion of Tivoli Gardens all that much, and as it stands right now, I think it's a beautiful, solid park that's not exactly my cup of tea. On the way to Europa Park from Park Asterix, I decided to stop at Nigloland, a charming family park in the French countryside, for a few hours, and I'm really glad I did. Alpina Blitz may just be beta parotten, but it still slaps, and the park has a good supporting collection of coasters and other rides that makes for a solid lineup of attractions. I want to point out Krampus Expedition, which is easily my favorite water coaster, and Don John Extreme, a massive drop tower. But what I really like about Nigloland is the charm and overall quality of the place. It looks great, it has some amazing operations, and is run very well. There's a few things here and there that could have been done better, and it's obviously pretty small, but overall Nigoland was a nice place that really impressed me. Grönland, my so-called home park when I lived in Sweden, even though I only visited twice, comes in at number 19. This is the best of the three small parks located in the middle of the capitals of Scandinavian countries. What really impressed me about this place is the number of quality attractions they managed to fit into such a small plot of land. The park has an amazing location in the middle of Stockholm right up against the water, resulting in very limited space and little to no room to expand. Despite this, the location gives Grönland a great atmosphere and brings out its creativity and uniqueness in terms of what it can offer. Coaster track winds over and around the pathways, several rides cross over each other, and there's a lot of attractions that take up very little space, like three drop towers and a star flyer, because they need all the space they can get. Grenadon doesn't have any fantastic rides, but they've got a lot of really good ones, and when you combine that with an atmosphere that reflects the best of Stockholm, results in a park I always had a fun time at. The first of the two Italian theme parks I visited was Gardaland, which takes our next spot. I don't really have any strong opinions regarding this place except for that Blue Tornado is a horrendous waste of steel and deserves to die a horrible, horrible death. Gardaland as a whole is pretty solid, a well-themed, well-landscaped park with a solid ride lineup and decent operations. A true standout coaster would go a long way for this place, and that's pretty much the only thing they're missing that could propel them into the next tier of parks. 
Like I said, no strong opinions about Gardaland, it's really good for what it is, but it's far from Europe's best park. Tripstrill is another well-themed park with a solid ride lineup, and it'll place in 17th. I ended up spending the first half of my day here before going to Holiday Park later, which gave me 4 hours at this place, and I felt it was sufficient enough. My favorite coaster here is Hal's Oberkopf, which really caught me by surprise with its intensity and strong set of elements. Carajo and their bath-themed log flume are solid supporting rides, but like I said, there's not a ton of other stuff that would necessarily justify spending a full day here, at least in my opinion. What's interesting about Tripstrill is that the front half of the park has a really confusing and windy layout with lots of buildings and charm, and the back half is very open with this massive grass field in the middle. Like most of the parks in this tier, it didn't blow me away by any means, but was still a park I'm happy I visited and one that I thoroughly enjoyed my time at. Taking a noticeable jump in quality brings us to the park with the best coaster in Europe, Plopsaland de Pan. Plopsaland's home to the one and only Ride to Happiness, which is a ride that I absolutely adore. Ride to Happiness isn't the only thing Plopsaland has though. Anubis the Ride is a powerful Gerslau with some strong forces, and Heidi the Ride is a fun, smooth GCI that's extremely enjoyable. Like Holiday Park, Plopsland is owned by Plopsa, hence the name, which has the rights to the Studio 100 characters that are prominent on lots of kids' TV programs in the area. As a result, this park is definitely directed more towards small children, but I think that gives it a special kind of charm that's not present in some of the other parks I visited. I came to Plopsland for Ride to Happiness, but I stayed for the charm, supporting collection of attractions, and the ability to marathon Ride to Happiness close to 20 times. Mirabilandia is a park on the eastern coast of Germany with a fantastic top 2, Eye Speed, and Katoon. I hadn't heard that many good things about this place before I went, but I was pleasantly surprised and definitely preferred it to Gardaland. I mentioned Eye Speed and Katoon, two top 20 coasters in Europe, and even if the lineup's really top heavy, there's still plenty to do at Mirabilandia that easily warrants a full day. I had no real problems with the operations or anything like that either, so I think Mirabilandia is overall a really solid park that doesn't exactly stand out among the other ones I visited, but it's certainly one that I had a fantastic time at. The first of three Dutch theme parks appearing on this list is Wallaby Holland. I've heard a lot of people say that this is like an upscale Six Flags park, but I can't comment on that because I've never been to a Six Flags park. Nevertheless, Wallaby Holland strikes a good balance between a great ride lineup and a solid atmosphere. The theming and ambiance are nowhere close to some of Europe's top parks, but they're definitely above average. Where this place shines though is in its ride lineup. Untamed is an easy top 10 coaster in Europe, Goliath is a fantastic number 2, Lost Gravity is a bit overrated but still solid, and the other coasters round out the collection well. Wallaby Holland is located less than an hour outside of Amsterdam, so this place definitely does get some serious crowds, made even worse for me because I visited around the same time I went to Wallaby Belgium, around Halloween. However, even though the crowd levels were comparable, Wallaby Holland managed the crowds much better. Coasters ran at full capacity with multiple trains, there was a good balance with single rider lines, restaurants and food stands operated efficiently, and overall this park did a really good job handling those tough crowds. There's not many negative things to say about this place except for how 95% of their audience are vaping Dutch teenagers. One spot higher is Hansa Park in Siegstorf, Germany. This park is also well known for their top two, consisting of Der Schwertes Kernen and Flucht von Novgorod. Karnen is a top 5 coaster in Europe for me, and Fluke von Novgorod, while a bit overrated, is still great. The supporting cast consists of Nessie, a classic Schwarzkopf with some shocking airtime, Highlander, Europe's tallest drop tower, and a couple other well-themed, enjoyable family coasters. But where Hansa Park shines is in its theming and overall presentation. The whole place just has a great atmosphere, it's well-themed and landscaped, and everything is flat-out nice, whether that be the immaculate detail in Karnen's queue, or something as simple as some nice greenery. Don't get me wrong, it's nowhere close to the best park in Europe, but it's not trying to be, and that's fine. Hansa Park's no Europa Park or Efteling, so come into this place with reasonable expectations, and I bet you'll be very, very pleasantly surprised. Eur Sommerland is a park located in the middle of nowhere Denmark that just screams quality. Much like Hansa Park and a lot of other places coming up, Eur Sommerland is well-themed, well-landscaped, and well-operated while having a solid ride lineup, all keys to being a great park. Piraten is undoubtedly the headliner, a crazy powerful Intamin Megalite that I'd call the best coaster in Denmark. Uvalen's amazing as well, delivering an incredibly fun ride experience with some unbelievable pacing, and Dragakongen rounds out their top 3 with another fun layout. Something interesting about this top 3 is that they're all non-inverting Intamins that reportedly reach a top speed of exactly 52.8 mph or 85 km per hour. 
Bawa puts Euro Summerland ahead of something like Hansa Park, even if it's not as well landscaped, is the staff. This place has some of the most energetic team members I've ever seen. That sort of energy feeds off on park guests, and as a result, Euro Summerland has a fantastic overall atmosphere. I really enjoyed my time here, but funny enough, there's another similar park that does what yours does just a bit better. Forup Summerland is a park located in the middle of nowhere Denmark that just screams quality. Sound familiar? Forup and yours are very similar, and lots of the things I said about yours apply to this park as well. Forup has a wooded setting which adds to the overall atmosphere and allows for some great surroundings. Something I found interesting about this park as well as yours is that, as a train's coming back into the station, a lot of the riders will chant what I think is something like one more time in Danish. What's cool is that at Forup, the ride ops actually let us go one more time on certain occasions, once on Falcon and also for my last ride of the night on Phoenix. I'm not sure how common it is, but it was definitely a fun experience for me to be a part of that. Forup Summerland's coaster collection is headlined by Phoenix, a new gen Vacoma that isn't quite as forceful as I would have liked, but is still fantastic, and in my opinion, a top 15 coaster in Europe. Lunit, Orkanen, and Falcon act as supporting coasters, all solid, but again, the park works so well because of the atmosphere. Even if it's not quite as grand as some of the top parks in Europe, Forup Summerland is still amazing and my favorite theme park in Denmark. Next up is Haida Park. Once again, this park has great theming, operations, and landscaping. What makes Haida Park rank higher than some places lower than it is its diverse ride lineup. While a bit overrated in my opinion, Colossus makes for a great headliner with its airtime and presence. Desert Rays, Flugder de Monin, and Crake are all very solid supporting coasters, and there's also a lot to do outside of those top four coasters like a super tall drop tower, shooting dark ride, some really fun family coasters, and a massive tower of slides. The whole park is situated around a lake, and some of the coasters even go out over it, which makes for a fantastic location. Overall, I had a really great time here, and highly recommend it if you're anywhere close. Coming in at number 9 is Parc Astrix, located about an hour north of Paris. If I had gone here before 2023, I'm sure it would have placed a few spots lower, but the reason it's this high is because of the unbelievable new for 2023 coaster, Tutatis. I know a lot of people aren't that high on this ride, but I firmly believe it to be a top 3 coaster in Europe. The park did such an unbelievable job with the theming of this coaster too, and that holds true for many of their other rides, such as Osiris, a fantastic B&M invert. Park Asterix goes all out theming their major coasters, which really enhances the overall experience. But a ride here I was really looking forward to, and one that admittedly disappointed me, was Teneri de Zeus. I never rode it backward, because it's not possible, but forward it gave a pretty lackluster ride experience, very shaky for a newly retracked coaster, and it gave pretty mild airtime. This is only one of two gravity groups I've been on, and having been pleasantly surprised with Twister at Grenal Lund, I was looking forward to a ride experience on Teneri de Zeus that I unfortunately didn't get. That doesn't take much away from the park as a whole though, with its fantastic headliner, supporting cast, and theming, and Park Asterix places in the top 10 on this list. Next is Alton Towers. I'm kind of split regarding my opinions with this place because on one hand, I see how incredible this park could be, I'm talking top 3 in Europe incredible, but I was ultimately left a bit disappointed with my experience at the park. My opinions on the coasters there could be debated for days, but here's the gist of them. Feel free to go off in the comments, it helps with engagement. Nemesis was closed for the retrack, so Wicker Man's my favorite coaster there, Oblivion is by far the weakest dive coaster in Europe, and Rita is the second best ride at the resort, better than the Smiler, which is mediocre and rattly. In addition, the Retro Squad flat rides are plain awful and completely negate the special environment this park has. But that environment is so fantastic. There's something so beautiful about Alton Towers with its location in the middle of nowhere, massive size, and all sorts of nature and history right in the middle of the park. Half of it doesn't even feel like a theme park, and if they tighten up how they're operating as well as add to the ride collection, I could easily see Alton Towers ballooning in these rankings. But as of now, 8th is a good and probably generous spot. One of the most underrated parks in Europe is Toverland. This takes the concept of the independent, charming European park and takes it to another level. The design of this place is amazing. It's so charming with the way pretty much everything has a detailed theme and feels so original in the way it's run and the way it flows. 
I went to Toverland on the same trip as the Wallabies, and it was packed, but I didn't really care. The operations were good, except for on Booster Bike where they were abysmal, and there's so much to do here outside of the rides that it's impossible to get bored. I mentioned there was a set of slides at Haida Park, well guess what, Toverland shits all over that. I'm by no means a playground enthusiast, I'll stick to coasters for now, but let me tell you the intricacies of slides and equipment to jump and play on at this place is crazy. If Alden Towers is half theme park, half walking trail, Toverland is half theme park, half jungle gym. It's honestly insane. That's not to say the rides aren't great though. While none of the coasters here made my top 25 in Europe, they do have a great one-two punch with Troy and Phoenix. Troy is a relentless GCI that needs a little bit of maintenance but is still fantastic in the front row, and Phoenix is probably my favorite wing coaster. The theming in that one is great, and the ride experience, although short, has a fantastic first half that packs some serious forces, most notably in that helix. Booster Bike and Duraviland are solid family supporting coasters that were both much better than I expected, but again, Toverland's more about the overall feeling of the park, and it has such an amazing feeling to it. I love this place. Lisa Barry is the best theme park in Scandinavia. When I think about a park that has personality, I think about this place. It's so well integrated into central Gothenburg, located partially on a hill and containing some of the wonderful Swedish landscape inside the park itself. Because of that hill, the park's essentially built in different levels that require you to take an escalator to go up and down. Of course, this results in some fantastic uses of the terrain when it comes to the coasters, most notably with Helix and Lisa Bonan. When I visited both Balder and Atmosphere, their drop tower were closed, so the ride lineup I experienced was a neutered version of the one that exists today, especially with Luna being added to the mix as a solid family coaster. Helix headlines their lineup, and while I'm not as high on it as some others, it's still fantastic. Valkyrie is my favorite dive coaster I've been on, and probably the best in the world, I don't see much else that could beat it, and it's themed very well too. Overall, Lisa Battery is just a fantastic place to be at. It doesn't do anything as inherently well as the top 5 parks on this list, but to be honest, that's fine because I'm struggling to come up with a single bad thing about this park. It's gorgeous, well run, has a great collection of rides, a fantastic location, friendly staff, the list goes on. Like I said, this is easily the best park in Scandinavia and one of the best in all of Europe. The only park in Spain I visited was Port Aventura World, which comes in 5th. Along with Europa Park, which we'll get to in a bit, Port Aventura had the most resort-style feeling out of all the places I visited. Of course, that's mostly because it is a big resort. Port Aventura is home to two theme parks, a water park, and lots of hotels and shops. I visited both Port Aventura Park and Ferrari Land, and I'm clumping them into one spot here. What Port Aventura does better than maybe any park in the continent is mix a fantastic coaster lineup with fantastic theming. Each area of the park is themed so, so well, and that includes Ferrari Land too, which has some amazing looking Italian architecture. The theming at Port Aventura is unbelievable, and the rides are as well. I'd say it is the second best collection of coasters in all of Europe, with Shambhala, an amazing B&M hyper, DragonCon, a super underrated sit-down coaster, Red Force, which is pure adrenaline, Furious Baco, powerful as well, and a great supporting lineup. With all the praise I'm giving Port Aventura, you're probably wondering why it comes in 5th and not anywhere higher. Well, the reason is that Port Aventura as a park is pretty much the absolute worst it's physically able to be. Operations are terrible, policies are terrible, and Express Pass is pretty much required at this park because ride ops basically only let Express Pass people into the station. I'm almost convinced the operations are bad on purpose in order to incentivize people to spend money on Express Passes. Which, I mean, I guess it's working, but that's not how you should run a theme park. I've mentioned the wonderful staff and operations at so many other European parks throughout this video, but that's just not how Port Aventura is. It's an incredible place that left me with somewhat of a sour taste in my mouth after seeing how it was operated. I know this park is currently for sale, which I couldn't be happier about because if a company buys this place and makes some changes regarding the things I've complained about, operating it like how Europa Park or something similar is operated, there is no doubt in my mind that Port Aventura would easily have a chance at becoming the best theme park in Europe. But during my visit, that simply wasn't the case. Moving on from one of the worst operated parks in Europe to one of the best, in fourth place we have Efteling. I was a bit skeptical before visiting this place because I didn't know if I'd enjoy the cutesy, charming feeling the park seemed to provide. Well, as you can tell from its placement, I absolutely adored Efteling. I'll be the first to admit, I usually prefer thrills over theming if one has to go, but Efteling drew me in and absolutely amazed me with everything it had to offer. As an example, I got into the park before the rides were open, so I decided to have something to eat. 
I went inside of this little building and it was absolutely decked out with structure upon structure of themed areas for kids to play in, and they all looked amazing. The park as a whole is majestic, and most of the coasters come with incredible themes as well. Baron 1898 gets recognized as having amazing theming, but aside from that, it delivers an incredible ride experience as well, and really surprised me. Joris and Dedrock warmed up a ton throughout the day, but I'm more surprised about how much I enjoyed this place considering that a good few of their standout rides were closed when I visited. Devlihende Hollander, Droomvlucht, and I think another dark ride were all closed, but it didn't feel like Efteling had any gaps in their ride lineup. Obviously, it's not going to have the best coaster collection, I knew that going in, but the way the thrilling rides and the dark rides complement each other is something I found incredible. Speaking of dark rides, Efteling has some really good ones, such as Symbolica, Fata Morgana, Villa Volta, and Carnival Festival. Like a lot of the parks on this list, Efteling is family-owned, which is incredible considering how detailed and immaculate everything in this park is. Of course, it's impossible to talk about Efteling without going over the fairy tale forest. This walking trail with tons of scenes from various fairy tales might be the single most charming area in any theme park. It's super long, but I never got bored during it because there was always something interesting to see, from classic stories like Little Red Riding Hood to ones that I had never heard about. This area and the park as a whole contains some of the most detailed animatronics I've ever seen. These animatronics range from the long neck dude to the tree with different facial expressions to those prevalent in all their dark rides. I could go on and on about how beautiful Efteling is, but we've got three more parks to get to. Admittedly, I'm a coaster enthusiast above anything else when it comes to parks, which is why Efteling doesn't place higher, but I can absolutely acknowledge how incredibly stunning this place is. It truly is a world of wonders. Next up is Fantasialand. I know, I know, this has pretty much been the consensus number one park in Europe ever since Rookberg opened, but there's a few things that I think hold it back from the very top of the list. I know Fantasialand gets a lot of praise for doing a lot with not much space, but in my opinion it feels like it's really trying to do a lot with a little, and it works to the park's detriment, if anything. A lot of the areas are really crammed because they're so small, and I would appreciate places like Klugheim and Rookberg getting a bit more room to breathe, but they can't because there's so many themed areas. Fantasialand has 8 lands and spans 69 acres, or 28 hectares, while something like Alton Towers has 11 lands and is 8 times bigger. As a result of the limited space, Fantasialand does not handle crowds well. This is a problem because since Fantasialand is so good, it naturally draws in a lot of visitors. I know this isn't really the park's problem because Brule is so incredibly strict about space, height, and noise, but it's something that affected my visit and was amplified by the small lands and cramped spaces. I also experienced a good amount of ride closures and some long lines due to mediocre operations. But now on to the good stuff. While I do believe Fantasialand to be slightly overrated, there's no denying it's a world-class theme park. The amount of detail put into almost every inch of this place is nothing short of incredible. Everyone talks about Rookberg and Klugheim, which are unbelievable, but I love Mexico and Africa as well. There are a few areas that are definitely weaker, like the part around Wu's Town, some areas of China, and the mystery section, but overall I can't complain too much about the park's theming, I can only nitpick about the fact that the amazing lands aren't bigger. Of course, Fantasialand's got an elite collection of rides as well. Terran is a bit overrated but still super fun, Black Mamba is an awesome invert that packs a punch, especially in the front row, Fly is arguably the most overrated coaster in Europe alongside Smiler for me, Winges and Colorado Adventure are both scarily intense family coasters, Chopos is an elite flume that gets riders maybe a bit too wet, and Mystery Castle is an amazing drop tower. What would really elevate this park in my eyes is a truly elite dark ride. As of now, it's only Geister Rickshaw, which is pretty outdated. When I compare Fantasialand to the other elite theme parks in Europe that focus on theming, dark rides are always one of their strong points, and that's something Fantasialand simply lacks. What Fantasialand does a great job of, though, is taking a simple ride concept and making it as unique and interesting as possible. You get the feeling that they put a special amount of care into each one of their rides and lands, which is reinforced by the fact that the staff here are super friendly as well. So overall, even though I'm not quite as high on Fantasialand as some others, it's still absolutely fantastic. The park with the best roller coaster collection in Europe, and one of the best in the world, located in Zader, Poland, is Zaderland. Nah, it's Energyland, yeah. Everyone knows about this park's vast coaster lineup, but the thing that surprised me about this place was how nice it was. I'd heard people talk about how much of a mess the front half of Energylandia is, and while there's definitely lots of places that look pretty bad, overall I found it to be decently charming, and it was fun at the very least. That front half also has quite a few areas with natural beauty and good landscaping like various plants, things like that. It's nothing over the top, but it definitely enhances the quality of the place. 
Theming and Landscaping at Energy Landia, though, play second fiddle to its absolutely massive collection of rides. It's a bit more quantity over quality, but that's not to say there's no great attractions. Zodra is the park's standout coaster and is commonly referred to as one of the best coasters in Europe, which I agree with. Hyperion serves as a great number two, Abyssus is shockingly powerful, Formula is really fun, but after that the lineup does drop off quite a bit. Objectively, this may not deserve to be above parks like Fantasialand and Efteling, but I had such a great time here that I had to place it this high. During my two days at Energylandia, there were hardly any crowds, which allowed me to get 18 rides on Zodra and 14 on Hyperion. I found the staff to be super friendly, operations to be decent, and the theming to be amazing in the back half of the park in the Dragon Zone and Aqualantis sections. Energylandia, backed by the funding they're getting from the Polish government, is still continuing to expand. When Sweet Valley is finished and their tilt coaster opens, I'm sure those additions will do a ton to benefit this place. There's definitely a few things that need some work at Energylandia, but overall I didn't mind because this place is so damn fun. That brings us to my favorite park I visited in Europe, Europa Park in Rust, Germany. I feel like this place takes the best parts of some of my other favorite parks in Europe and combines them all into one to make an unbelievable experience. It's got the quantity of Energylandia, the dark rides of Efteling, the theming of Port Aventura, and the quality of Fantasialand. Europa Park is filled to the brim with so much stuff, it's hard to believe they got so much right. Each one of their lands is themed to a different European country, and each one has its own distinct feel to it. I've talked about the care and charm that goes into so many of these European parks, and Europa Park exemplifies that maybe more than any other, while still providing a larger-than-life, resort-like feeling that transports you to another world. One of the main criticisms I've heard with Europa is that its coaster collection is pretty weak, but I disagree because this park's overall ride collection is stellar. Of course, you've got your standouts like Woden, Silver Star, and Blue Fire, which were all better than I expected them to be, but there's also so many incredible dark rides. Piraten in Batavia is quite possibly the most immaculately themed ride I've ever been on, period. It absolutely blew me away, especially as someone who isn't super high on dark rides in general. I loved all of this park's dark rides, even more than the ones at Efteling, and what surprised me is how good all of them were considering the huge quantity. Geisterschloss, Aventor Atlantis, Madame Freuden, Rec Curiosities, Piccolo Mundo, Snorri Torn, and Volatarium are all amazing. That's not even counting some of their other rides like Arthur, Fjord Rafting, Atlantica Super Splash, Eurosat Can Can Coaster, and the Tyrol Log Flume, among others, that I also had a great time on. I could rattle off a bunch more rides because this place has so many good ones, but I think you get the point. It's incredible how a park designed to be a showcase for the Mock family's portfolio of attractions grew and grew until Europa Park became what it is today. I can't emphasize enough the beauty that each one of these lands exhibits, and as someone who was doubting how good Europa Park was before I went to visit, I'll be the first to admit that I was absolutely wrong to doubt it. While there's definitely parks with better coaster collections, at least until Voltron opens, Europa Park outshines them all with its impeccable atmosphere and sheer number of great things there. It's quality and quantity packed into one, and somehow doesn't even feel overwhelming with all it has to offer. Despite its size, it has the same sort of charm that's prevalent in smaller parks. If I had to give some criticisms, I'd mainly focus on the coaster collection. Woden is their only truly elite one, but of course that'll change once Voltron opens. It's great to see Europa Park continue to expand, especially considering how great it already is. I can't say enough good things about this place, and in my opinion, it is the best theme park in Europe. Thanks so much for watching all the way until the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it. This took a long time to edit and a lot of effort to make, so go ahead and like and subscribe if you did end up enjoying it. In case you didn't know, I'm currently hosting a big tournament between the 64 best coasters in the world. Polls are posted daily in my community tab for the tournament, so make sure to check that out, assuming this video hasn't taken so long to edit that the tournament's already finished. Once again, thanks for watching, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss new videos, and goodbye.